How about now? Can you, I know you can hear me now, right? I know you can hear me now. I know you can because all my little bars are going buck wild. Yes? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, it's going to be like church up in here, y'all. Okay. I think we're good, right? We're good? Yay! Thank you all for your patience. I, um, thank you for your patience because, wow, thank you for your patience. So awesome. You guys are the best. Hey, lady. Fabulous! Um, all right, so, <laughs> I want to feel badly about that, but I don't, and I'll tell you why. If I could tell you, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, like, okay, I kind of sort of believe in Mercury Retrograde. I just don't think it has to be the big deal that everybody makes it out to be, and I really do think some of it is psychosomatic for people. Um, thank you, I'm glad you can hear me. So, um... Man, you all are, you're the best. You're patient with my tomfoolery. And um, so I just, the number of people that have had technical issues with their phones, with their cars, anything electronic in the last week and a half, it's been craziness. And so I think I have to drink the Kool-Aid. I've just got to be a for real believer in uh, Mercury Retrograde being a bigger, <clears throat> starts with a B. <laughs> Ends with the TCH. Um, then, well, see, Nikki, you're like you're electronically illiterate. What what confounds me is if you give me a website, I am I, I I'm a power user of WordPress. Let me just say this: I can do anything with a WordPress site, anything. But the electronics, not so much. Okay, so housekeeping. Um, I hope that you all like the free content that I produce here. And so I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and hit the, the hit the notifications bell so that you get all the notifications. And uh, also, if you would kindly, I thank you guys so much. A bunch of you sent me a um, you you sent me a notice that you've been sharing my stuff on your social media channels, and I really do appreciate that. Um, I also appreciate the cat hair that's now in my eye. <laughs> this is just crazy. This is morning, but we're getting there because the um. The messages that are, are today's messages are crazy. And so if you remember, um, the, uh, the, sorry y'all, I, I, something in my eyes, or in this eye. Um, if you remember Wednesdays, we're doing a deep dive into the card of the day. Uh, we're taking it through the chakras. And then I'm going to open the floor for questions in the last half hour. But... There's been this really interesting change going on, a trend that I'm noticing, where people are really working with tarot and uh, animal medicine and oracle cards to not so much to predict things outside of themselves, but to really reflect inside of themselves. And what that means is, uh, you know, I, I get a... You know, I, I read a, lar a large number of people per month. And so that gives me data to work with. And what I've noticed, in, like I said, in the last few months, it's a trend where people are really calling so much and setting up things so much as um, to get outcomes as much as it's about, well, here's the outcome I want. What do I have to do inside of myself to bring that about? And I have to tell you, first of all, it's such an honor to read for anybody. It's a real honor. I, I love reading for people. And it's just such an elevated kind of, it's just, it's an elevation of kind that tells me that the consciousness of people that are, you know, into metaphysics is really rising, I think, more than we know. Because there's no, there's really no body that reports on this. How, how do you gather? There's no statistical data for that, right? Okay. So I'm just telling y'all now that today, I would not be surprised if in the, Lily, when I start using social media, you will too. Excellent. Um, I appreciate that. But the thing is, is that I would not be surprised if today you have a ton of self-discovery uh, throughout this reading, and I would not be surprised if something with that self-discovery 
triggers in a good way some massive leap, leap in self-actualization, whatever that's going to mean for you. And the other thing that I, uh, I have noticed is, you know, it would kind of make sense that people of a certain age, right? Like we talk, oh, look, like alfalfa, I've got one hair. <laughs> My lipstick's right. My hair's a mess. Um, I, uh, you know, I live in Florida, which is God's waiting room. And one of the top three retirement communities across the U.S. is like 45 minutes from my house. So, you know, I get to watch what people of a certain age do, what they're in, interested in, what they're invested in. And I'm noticing so much in people that are like even late 50s or over, they're, 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 they used to be hobbyists and I think they still are. But I'm, I'm, I'm watching even this older, uh, older set just become so invested in themselves, just the person that they want to be, how they want to show up in the world, what they want to contribute to the world, what they want from the world, that kind of thing. It's just glor It's just glorious. It's just, it's a gift every day. I feel like I'm, I'm getting a, a bird's eye view of like the most beautiful hope and um happiness and um again the elevation of spirit and it, it, it's amazing so don't be surprised today y'all okay so here we go um the card and the animal that came out for you all today is the page of pentacles which is the camel now when you take a look at the pages um you know when when you're talking about traditional tarot card meanings and, and, it, and that is my deck, I read with my deck, the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck, and it is based on the Rider Waite Smith tarot system. System, And when you look at the court cards, the, the page is, the, you know, of course, it's the most immature, you could think of it that way, um, or you could think of it as it's, it's almost an extension or, or very like a distant cousin of the Fool card. Just a young person that, that, that speaks of, maybe new beginnings or things that are in their infancy, you know, and I don't mean like baby infancy, but, you know, again, in the traditional Rider Waite tarot card, you've got, um, oh, you know what? Joel said I could uh, share a screen with you. I don't want to try that because of the sound. I don't want to try that. I was going to show you the traditional Rider Waite card with that. Um, and so, you know what? I'm going to look for it in my Rider Waite deck while we're talking. So the first thing that I would say um, when you pull this card in a reading, now, of course, it would depend on what other tarot cards are around it, right? Um, but, but really what that's going to hearken you to is that you are maybe with inside of yourself or with someone else, you're, you're, you are having a relationship or need to have a relationship or need to understand maybe this part of yourself better or somebody else better. And, and what that means is, so the pentacles are the more mature, uh, suit, you know, uh, of tarot. And so when you're looking at the suit of pentacles and you've got the pentacle earth, air, fire, water, spirit, you, you are instantly alerted to whatever card that is in that suit that comes up in a reading you're, you're looking at abundance in, in many different ways. And so today, uh, you know, when you take a look at that, really, what does that mean for your own life? What, and, and you might even be working with, um, oh gosh, I see this a lot when moms come in for readings. Um, and I'm like, oh, and who's your son or who's your daughter? And I'll describe them. And it's like, well, uh, you know that you're, you're dealing with, uh, it maybe even in a very positive way, an old soul in a young body. And so I, uh, one time I gave a reading to someone and this card, you know, here it is the, you know, the traditional page of pentacles. And we'll get into the very specific symbolism of this because one of the things I know that it's important that you all do when you're drawing for yourself or someone else is drawing for you is, you know, I teach intuitive tarot, right? We do go over the tarot card meanings based on the Rider Waite Smith system, but that's, that can be only, a, you know, that can be just a portion of what a card or the archetype in the card can tell you. So all of that being said, 
you you might be working within a thing where and it's like a reading I had one time um, it was an old soul in a in a young person's body but really what it turned out to be was old money meaning great wealth that had been handed down through generations of her family and she was about to acquire this wealth um, unfortunately someone passed and she was about to acquire this wealth and she was really having a difficult time with it for a lot of different reasons so you can sometimes see old money with a new person um, or you might see you know um, maybe someone and I had this happen one time too it was someone that was um, buying an already established business and they were they were not really too sure about it so really this card the page of Pentacles it can mean a number of different things if you'll allow yourself um, and if you have that kind of reader that you're getting a reading from that will really go into that now when when you take a really close look at the page of Pentacles it's over well first of all its element is earth so that always alerts me uh, when this card comes out in a tarot reading uh, especially and it was upright today right so this is the page of Pentacles upright and then I'll just touch on the page of Pentacles reversed a little bit you know in, in a little bit because some of you will not read with reversals but you are intuitive readers which means sometimes even if you get a card upright you will know what the inverted meaning means and your intuition your psychic self might lead you to, to to give a caution or say hey here's the challenge that I'm feeling of this card but this is the element of earth and so whatever you are trying to bring abundance to it, it is if you look at the earth that this you know this old boy is standing on it is fertile as it can be right it's green and it's lush and it even has blooming flowers in it so whatever you're doing inside or outside of you to even just say that you've planted a seed is too simplified it's like you've planted an entire crop and even though it's a young crop as it matures it's gonna do really well and here's something super interesting about today's uh, you know live tarot reading for you know for the wild pack and well really anybody who watches this you know throughout the day or and people come back later and they you know they watch the the daily tarot readings uh, you know because there are people that are like well if I'm called to it even if it was a week or two weeks ago if I'm called to it that's probably the message for me but it's interesting because in in all of you all this morning in the collective um, energy there's such positivity just like such positivity and there's such a huge like if you, again if you look at this background um, you know it's the it's the proverbial golden background with some red up there I mean that is about wisdom and insight and warmth and growth and uh, it's gold I mean all the things that the color gold means or anything that is you know actually the metal alloy of gold I just feel that through the whole group and that's unusual because when I dive into you know when I'm doing platform readings you know in person or I'm doing these my job is to you know is to do that thing where you leap off a stage and you know you let the energy catch you but I, I man I'm just so happy for you all this morning it, it, there's some kind of major shift that's going on with a bunch of you again it's just all so positive so when when also the page of Pentacles um, shows up in a tarot reading one of the things that you definitely know is that there's a quest for wisdom going on there and what I'm feeling like and you know what if, if this is this part really for sure for sure um, replying to Sheila asks for uh, Debbie I don't know you I when somebody says PM me I'm immediately alerted to that they are a spammer so I'm gonna block you and if I'm doing it erroneously I'm sorry I'm sorry uh, you can just hit me up on Facebook later but uh, mm -mm, no no oh I forgot to say that but I would hope you all know this by now um, none of me or my people I mean the trolls and the spammers just get worse and worse and worse so um, it uh, it's not my people and it's not me I'm nobody's cheesy like that in my play in my place okay so um, 
I, I would say that the, uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Sheila, thank you for that. Y'all don't get hooked in by these crazy people. Please don't. But here's the thing. Um, well, that's it. There you go. That's an example of intuition. I have not been paying attention to the chat so I can stay with this card and this archetype, but I was called to look over just then and whammo, there's a spammer. There's a, there's a troll. That's why they call it psychic, right? Okay. So there's something going on inside of each of you. You're, you're not just sitting still. You're not in a stasis. You're not just sitting around in a, in a, in a meh, in a lull, you are on a quest for wisdom, like real wisdom. And I will bet you, if you all, please just tell me in the chat, I will bet that you've recently, even more so than ever before, started looking for the real truths of things, the real truth about yourself, the real truth about the world outside of you, the real truth about other people, and you're wanting to take a real deep dive into metaphysics or your own spirituality. And they are, they are mutually exclusive, okay? Metaphysics, one day will be proven a real science. Right now it's called a pseudoscience. One day it's going to be proven a science. And, um, and spirituality, some people will lump them together. I do not. I think they are very separate things. And I know a number of people that are... Are, are deeply metaphysical and study the science a lot. They, they don't count themselves as spiritual. So see, there you go. Okay. You all are, Hey Dylan. Um, you all are, Oh, right. Okay. So yeah, you guys are deep diving, um, into this and, um, THC has been legalized where I live. Okay, cool. Yay. Okay. So it is, uh, this is really, you know, this card, this page of pentacles, it is telling you that you're, oh, that's it. It's telling you you're on the right track. If those are the things that you're doing currently, or if those are the things that you want to do, it's like get into, get into the, um, get with the program and get moving a little bit faster. Now, I do want to point out also that there are a number of, uh, you know, great books and, and, and really learned people about the Rider Waite Terrace system that don't count the page of pentacles as male. They, they're called princesses in some, in some people's books and some people's decks. So the gender of this is not really important unless what, what you've been told is, cause I was told this as a young tarot reader. I, oh, well this, you know, this card absolutely represents a dark headed young boy. No, it doesn't. If that's your truth, then it does for you. That's how your tarot will show up for you. But for those of us that don't think in those ways, um, and we are willing to uh, and able to expand intuitively to meet these cards and their archetypes in the etheric, it can be any gender. And I mean any gender or no gender. The point is that it's a young soul, a young spirit that is bringing forth these messages. Now, when you take a look at the card that comes right before the page of pentacles, it's the 10 of pentacles. And that's wisdom gained from, um, observing known moral and natural laws, reflecting on a lifetime experience, you know, lifetime experience. But the young person in the page of pentacles is literally a blank slate. So again, what I'm hearing for, for, you know, or, or what I'd like you to share with you that when you're reading or you're getting a reading and the page of pentacles shows up, you could very well be, uh, being, uh, you know, told of, uh, a time that's coming for you where you were, will you will literally go to ground zero and then rebuild everything from then. Like you might just become a totally different person. Um, people that I've known that have struggled with addiction, you know, they'll get to that point or people in an abusive relationship, a toxic relationship, they'll get to that point and they'll just strip everything away inside and outside. And they're, 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 they don't want to be that person that, you know, does those things, makes those choices, and then they rebuild. So oftentimes you will see the page of pentacles show up in a, in a tarot reading, in a tarot card reading when it means that, and it, and 
and if you are rebuilding yourself, your life, your inside, your outside, your career, your love life, it, you know, it doesn't matter. Just know that it's going very, very well and you're a lot farther along than you think because you've got the wisdom um, of, of the pentacles supporting you. And so even if you don't see that true wisdom right now or that ancient wisdom or that old wisdom, um, not old like, oh, that's old news, but old and ma mature. Let me just put it that way. You, oh, my goodness. Because, again, you look at the symbolism and the meaning um, of this particular tarot card and the, the plowed field and the, uh, the tall blue mountain and the... Um, it, 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 it just speaks of such regeneration and rebirth and abundance and, and health. Well, oh, there's the other word I'm supposed to bring uh, forward, right? Is that this is about uh, your rebirth, right? Okay, Raven, Raven Jensen's, mm, okay, I'm rebuilding all those things, girl. You better, you, if you're a girl, um, I, I can't see your picture, so I don't know. Uh, and it doesn't matter. So, uh, I would get construction zone, one of the, one of those things, and I would just put it or carry it with you. Maybe get a little necklace that reads, you know, under construction or something like that. That's funny. So to me, so all of that said, remember when we talk about planting a seed, when we talk about planting a crop, sure, that can mean you go out digging in the dirt, right? But you, this could be about digging in the dirt of your mind because that is a, a symbol. You know, the symbolic meaning is about churning things under, getting rid of the old, bringing in the new, that kind of thing. Um, the other thing is, I always say to this card, um, or about this card, people will catch me sometimes, I'll be like staring out into space, and they'll be like, hello. And, and for toddlers, they call it the, uh, gosh, what do they call it? The toddler stare. Where, you know, those of you that have had kids, you, um, uh, I, need to put, I need to buy some cruelty-free hairspray, I'm out. But anyway. Um, you'll just look at your kid as they were taught and they're just staring at nothing and you think they're doing nothing and a lot of parents are like, is there something wrong with them? No, that's how they're gathering their thoughts. They're taking time. They're, their little minds are catching up to all of the information that's coming in because I don't know if you guys remember when you were young, but you were a blank slate. Yes, we carry things in from other lifetimes. I believe that. Yes, we have a sacred contract. I believe that. Um, I don't know what you believe, but think of being a toddler incarnating into this 3d reality no matter what you bring forward it's still a new thing and there's so much information to take in sometimes you just got to sit and think right okay now if you go back to that yellow sky that we were talking about that beautiful golden yellow sky now you're talking about you know we, we talked about yes it's like gold it's like this it's like that but remember it's intellectual um, meaning the yellow, even if you are literally planting a crop of, you know, taters or maters or whatever, the, the golden, the yellow is about the intellectual process that this card, uh, is bringing to you. And that, yes, your emotions, you, you, you know, yes, be in touch with your emotions. Yes, know your emotions, but now's the time to really really think about things like really think so um when uh you know just a couple more things and then i'll move on uh the thing about also this is remember if you look well here just let me let you see i didn't notice this till a while after i was reading and reading like really in-depth tarot card meaning books like seriously right like rachel pollocky kind of things at first glance you think that pentacle is resting in his hands or her hands or, or or no gender's hands but it's not if you look really closely it's hovering just above the hands and what that means is there's a reaching out to grasp this, to get this knowledge, to get this abundance. And it's right there within your grasp, but you may not be reaching for it. Um, you may be expecting it to plop in your lap or plop in your hands. You got to have the reach for it. You've got to have the reach for it. So whatever questions that you might have going on in your life today, 
you know, as you're watching about the, the, you know, the page, the, the page of pentacles card is above all else. You've got to go for the gusto. You've got to reach out and snatch literally the brass ring. I mean, you get, I mean, it's a gold pentacle. It's a gold coin, but you get what I'm saying. You've got to reach out for it. The other, just one thing I want to say, um, and this is specifically about the page of pentacles upright. You're, you're being asked to really take a good look at the full scope of what you're discovering because there's a why it's not just that you're discovering these things but why is that why for you are you interested in these things at this time are you planting these seeds at this time have you been downloaded from spirit that it's a calling have you just looked around and, and in your mind you're like well okay i've looked around and this makes sense so i'll do this or i'll okay but maybe future like future proof yourself so um it's like well future proof yourself what case in point why would you buy a discounted why would you buy a discounted tv that is going to be discontinued in six months why would you do that? Why wouldn't you buy the, if it's a proven model, if it's a proven upgrade or a proven, you know, advancement in that model or another model, why wouldn't you future proof yourself and buy that one? Sure. It's going to cost more. That's true. But in the long run, it's going to cost less because the one that's being discontinued, you know, you won't be able to get parts for it. If anything happens, you know that it, you know, I mean, we can do this list all day long. So why wouldn't you just get the one that over time, is going to give you better value even if it costs more in this moment. Now, one of the one of the other things when I see the page of pentacles come up in a tarot reading is it's um it is man, I see this a lot, a lot, a lot when people are really just they've had enough of living the life that they felt like they were expected to live or they went into a profession that later on they're like, Oh my God, this is nothing like what I thought. I don't want to do this. Um, you know, I, I tell the story cause I have her permission to, I won't mention her name, but I have permission to tell her story. <laughs> I got a young lady that went through vet school. Um, and she came to me one day and I was like, uh Oh, you don't want to be a vet anymore no ma'am and it was it you know i mean imagine you're young your parents have paid for you to go through vet school and now not only do you not want to be a vet but you don't want to be in medicine of any kind except for like alternative medicine <laughs> yeah she was in a quandary so um i i would say that if you are thinking about changing things changing direction uh, you know at any point or now then the page of pentacles is going to serve you in very, very good stead. Now, let's say that you're doing an intuitive tarot card reading or you or somebody else who's flipping cards. Let's say the page of pentacles comes reversed. Okay. Whereas upright, the page of pentacles is very laser focused and soaking in all of the energy when it's reversed. It's, it's literally almost like you've turned somebody upside down and the, 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 the thoughts and the ideas and the vision, they're just, they're a mishmash. They're cascading out of the head. They're just, you know, and then they get blown to all four corners of the earth. The wind comes along and it picks that up and you're like, way, you don't know where to reach first. It's kind of that kind of thing. It, it also, uh, also see the page of pentacles inverted. When I know that someone is not experiencing personal abundance. And what that means is, a lot of negative self-talk going on, a lot of lack of confidence, a lot of disbelief that anything really good could, could, could do for them. What like would, would be meant for them. Or even if, you know, they might have the attitude that, well, even if a good thing happens, I don't even bother to enjoy it because I know two or three not great things are going to come right behind it. That's the page of pentacles inverted. Don't do that. Don't be that. If you know, um, if that's what it means to you in a tarot card reading of any kind, 
um, especially intuitively, then I, I would tell you that your very first action after you get this card revert, you know, reversed um, or inverted. And again, we're talking about pulling one card. If you've pulled a card for a tarot spread, you've got the Celtic cross or you've got the three spread, you know, the, the three fates, past, present, future. Um, you know, any, any kind of my friend Corby Mitlide, oh my gosh, she, y'all, she, she makes up tarot spreads that are truly the most astonishing and insightful things I've ever seen. I'm like, what? How did you even think to do that? She was like, I didn't. She said, it's like you, how you are with your animals, you know, the animal spirit guide. She says, you know, I've never seen anybody be able to, to connect with animals the way you do in, in terms of psychically and shamanically and all of that. And she said, I, tarot is my animal. And I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense. So, um, and so it go to, if you go to her site, by the way, fire, fire, it's either fire through fire through spirit.com or Corby .com. Either way, both of those URLs redirect. She's got probably, I don't know, 15, 20, 30, maybe even more, um, different tarot spreads that she has created. And you could go take a look at them and read what they're about. And that, that could really help you as a reader, I believe. So again, if you go back to, um, you know, the page of pentacles inverted, it, again, it's about loving kindness towards yourself because you're probably getting frustrated with yourself or making yourself upset. This is, it's, it's not the time to do that. Don't even waste any time on that. You want to be sure to like check in and see where your blockages are and spend some time really focused on that. It, it, it also is a call for, you know, listen, the page of pentacles is a young spirit. So all of the old ways that you've had of doing things, uh, you know, if you keep doing things one way and it's still not working, that's madness, right? That's insanity. You don't, you're not insane. Well, maybe you are, but in all the best ways. So, um, you know, some crystals to think about as you, uh, work with the page of pentacles. And I just say this because there, if I were going to do a reading with what these particular, um, stones mean, I would probably work with amethyst because that's definitely all up in here, the third eye, the crown chakra, because of its purpleness. Um, and it is the, um, you know, it is the stone of Dionys or Bacchus and that whole wine thing, which is hilarious to me. And the zodiac sign that correlates to it is Capricorn. So you know that it's got a very definite earth-based kind of meaning. So I hope that was helpful. Now what we're going to talk about is camel and how they correlate. So, pardon me, if you take a look at a camel as a spirit totem and power animal, and in my deck it's the page of pentacles, what, what you're talking about is uh, an animal, quote unquote, that is very, very associated with long journeys. Now, before mankind got their grubby hands on camels, they used to, of course, run wild. And strangely enough, just like llama and alpaca, <laughs> the vast majority of the world's camels are domesticated. And actually, I think it's the Bactrian camel. Um, I think it's the Bactrian camel. And then we'll go into the sacral chakra. Um, I think it's a Bactrian camel. Yes, uh, the wild Bactrian camel that is in, it, critically endangered. And any time I see a card or an animal that is part of a reading, it's really important to know how they're thriving in the world today. And not so much. The, the camels in the wild are not thriving so much today. And so when, you know, when an animal spirit guide comes out for you and they're on the critically endangered list or endangered list or the, you know, the watch list or whatever, it is definitely, definitely, definitely a call to take a look at your, who's surrounding you, who is, um, who's trying to hold you down, hold you back, who, who is just try, trying to play. Because remember, y'all, at the end of the day, you're responsible for how you allow people to treat you. Believe me, that was a hard one for me. As a kid, that was tough. I, I took me a while to get that. Um, cause I, you know, I had the same mentality of a lot of people. Why me? I do X, Y, and Z. Why me? I don't do X, Y, and Z. Why me? Well, you know, once you start uncovering the truth of the matter, you're like, oh, 
right, my energy attracted that because of X, Y, and Z. Same with y'all. But still in all, it's always, it always lets me know that, that someone, uh, whoever the reading is for, they're just really being um, hemmed in. Hemmed in, held down, held back, and, and the wild is uh, not going so well. So that being said, um, the other thing that I will tell you is, you know, and I, I, for any of you that have ever watched any of the, the, like a camel video that I've done or a, you know, anything page of pentacles or whatever, I literally just learned this like six months ago. Camels do not store water in their humps. You know, that's what you're taught in school. I distinctly remember that because I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. They don't. They store fat in their humps, okay? And what that means is the, the, the ability that you have to sustain yourself is quite something because just from the fat in their humps, camels can go for weeks and sometimes maybe even a month or two without eating because of that stored fat, that stored um, power source. That said, again, when I see this card, I know, oh my gosh, Maureen, I just saw that. It's hump day and the camel came. That just hit me. Thank you for pointing that out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's hump day. Yay. You guys have seen the commercials, I know. So um, it is, uh, yeah, right? The Geico commercials. Yeah, it is a hilarious thing. So, no, they don't, Tiffany. They do not store water in their humps, crazily enough. But, and who, who is that? Kelly B. They live in the desert with no food. Yep, okay. They, that is true. And, and, of course, there's not a lot of water. And they can go for a while without water, but they can hydrate really quickly, too. I mean, they're like everything else. They've got to have water. Probably not as quickly as another, you know, well, listen, all species adapt to where they live, right? Um, I am convinced that, I am absolutely convinced that the only adaptation that animals, including humans, do not do well is in really crowded, frantic places like giant cities. I, I don't, I, just for scientific purposes, just the, the proximity of your electrical field with everybody else's electrical field. And, you, you know, I, mm, I don't think that, mm, no, 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 no. So that said, um, Again, when you take a look at camel as a spirit totem or power animal, um, and and that's for you, that's for you to work with with spirit. Meaning, what um, what is it for you at this moment? It is is camel coming to you as a spirit animal, as a totem animal, as a power animal? I don't know. You will know, and camel will know, and. Again, when we're talking about the ancient wisdom that the Page of Pentacles is is looking to absorb, the camels represent like travelers who are experienced travelers. They they've they're 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 going down well beaten, well worn paths. And again, that speaks to ancient wisdom. That speaks to old wisdom, stuff that's gonna be it was as true a million years ago as it's true today. And in the world that we live in today, this is not a political commentary. Please don't start discussing politics. Um, that never goes well. The, the bottom line is there are, there are traditional ways of doing things that will be good for people. It was good yesterday. It's good today. It will be a good thing tomorrow. And it'll be a good thing five jillion years from now. And there are some things from the past that are not good things. And we are in an evolutionary world. And, and things are changing so rapidly that it might, this card might be a call that you're being called to, to be a, a distributor of new truths. And what that means is while you're looking for truth for yourself, what patterns are you, are you divesting yourself of or healing yourself of? What patterns are you, um, emotional blockages, mental blockages. And again, I'm not a medical professional of any kind. I'm not telling you what to do as a medical professional. This is 
metaphysical in nature and for entertainment purposes only, but let's say that you're working with, you know, metaphysics or your form of spirituality to remove, you know, mental and emotional blocks. Okay, that's, that camel is a fantastic one to keep you on your journey because sometimes you don't know where your next meal is going to come from. What that symbolizes, the symbolic value of that is when we are on a quest for anything. Um, right now, I just introduced, if y'all haven't seen them, let me just tell you, ooh, I'll put it in the chat window. Hold on. For the, I know a bunch of you all love bears. Um, hold on, that's the wrong thing. Humor me while I get this link. Um, there is an amazing tarot deck creator. His name is Doug Thorn Thornso. I can never say his last name. But I was first introduced to him on a Kickstarter when he, um, I'll get, I'll get the link afterwards, y'all. I don't want to, I don't want to be all flim flammy around here, but, uh, he did this amazing Halloween deck, which of course I bought cause I'm a Halloween freak. He just put out a deck of all bears. Ooh, that's a 78 card deck based on the Rider weight, you know, Smith system. And it's all bears now, teddy bears, but it's still all bears, man. I about lit my keyboard up ordering that thing so fast. Sparks flew off my fingers. Anyway, um, ooh, Tiffany K, your dad's favorite animal is a bear. Does he like, does he like, um, does he like tarot? You should get him a deck. So all of that being said, it's a call for you to, to be involved with being a person that is gifting new wisdom to the world that is also perhaps steeped in or germane to ancient wisdom. And to do that for yourself also. Now, um, it is, uh, you know, also, let, let's say that, you know, and I always want to make this distinction because I, I get this question every single day of my life. Is there a difference between spirit totem and power animals? No, there's not. Depending on which culture you're talking to, they all kind of mean the same thing. But when the animal allies came to me and asked me to create the deck, well, first they asked me to create what is my spirit animal.com, which has grown to be like the most comprehensive anything on the internet about spirit totem and power animals and working with animal spirit guides and everything having to do with that and more. Um, and then they asked me to create the deck. They also asked me to introduce a new system based on ancient wisdom. Lo and behold, I, you know what? I totally forgot that till just now. I've never told this in a video before. Really, maybe I think only to a few friends I was telling this story, but I want to say that once I was told that, I kept seeing camels everywhere. Like really shortly after I had that vision, I kept seeing camels everywhere. And when I read up on the symbolism of camels, again, on my own site, <laughs> and on some other people's sites, and I looked them up in books and whatnot, that's when I was like, oh, I'm supposed to bring new wisdom based on ancient methods or scenarios or whatever, right? And so Camel is a great call for you to do that because they are such ancient critters. But the new system that was downloaded into me was that spirit animals are the animals that show up to you in your hour of need to help, to heal, to support, um, and you can actively you know, connect with the animal spirit guides to show you what animal you should be working with or what animal or animals are supporting you. Your totem animal is who you are, beginning with your zodiac sign. And then your power animal is the animal that you step out of. I've started describing it that way. You guys all know that uh, Catherine Skaggs was the one who was like, you're not in Bernadette, you don't invoke the animal from inside of you. You actually are the animal and you invoke Bernadette to come outside of the animal. And I think that's true for everybody that's an animal lover that truly um, is in a deep relationship with spirit, totem, and power animal guides, the animal allies. I think it's the same for you. You, If you think about it in your life, you like if you're like, Maureen, I know you, so I'm going to use you as a an as example. Um, you are, uh, you're a wolf. You don't appear like it on the outside to many people. But you have a lot of, when you get to know you, you have a lot of wolf-like qualities. A lot. A lot. Um, and, oh gosh, 
Y'all, I'm so sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to my moderators, um, Maureen and Teapot, Teapot, Maureen. Uh, thank you all so very, very much. I appreciate you coming here and, and, and helping me, uh, you know, give a better experience to the wild pack because I can't be in chat and be doing this at the same time. So all of that said, um, everybody needs a Catherine Skaggs drum. Let me tell you something. Everybody needs a Catherine Skaggs drum, y'all. I, um, I, um, I, I just was not a drummer. Just wasn't my thing. I can't tell you how many times during the day I pick that thing up and put it in my lap and just tap it and just sit there. And if it's not that, it's Native American flute music, which I still haven't learned to play my, my flute, but I'm, I'm working on it. Um, so let me go back to, let me go back to the spirit totem power animal. So one size, so I was like, wow, what's up with the camel thing? I was like, oh, okay, that, that makes sense because I've been asked to create this system and there's no right or wrong when you're working with spirit guides. Please don't let anybody convince you that there is because there's not, it can't be, they can't prove it. If science can't prove it, then it can't be proven. Now you and I know that we know what we know, what we know. I mean, you know, I got my start as an evidential medium. So if, you know, if I have somebody show up and say, you know, my favorite food was Twizzlers, that's pretty much proof that, how would I know that? How would any medium know that? How would any tarot reader know that? How would any intuitive psychic medium, how would you know that? Like, that's such an odd thing. Like, if you just say, well, I think this person's favorite food was soup. Did I get it right? Oh, not soup. Okay. Mashed potatoes. Did I get it? It's not like that. You show up and you, cause I did actually about a year ago. I was like, did your husband live on Twizzlers? She was like, Oh my God, he got diabetes because all he would eat was Twizzlers. That's literally, and sweet tea. That's what this man lived off of was Twizzlers and sweet tea. I was like, that, that's horrible. I was like, did he get rickets? Anyway. So, um, so there's that about the ancient wisdom and new ways as regards camel. Now, if camel is showing up as your spirit animal, and please remember that when you are working with your animal spirit guides, in my book, uh, well, the new book, which is coming along fabulously, thank you, and, and in the book for the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck, okay, I have, well, what this animal means as a spirit totem and power animal, but that's just what the animal told me to tell y'all. That doesn't mean that is always going to be true for you. So for instance, it, Camel wanted to be known as a spirit animal in the venue of when it's time for you to like shore up your resources, like plan for, we, you know, in my day, we call it plan for a rainy day. And that is again, inside of you as well, right? It's like, okay, I'm, I'm going into this situation or I'm going into this, I'm going into that. And I know that I'm unconfident about that. Okay, well, it's time for you to go get some confidence juice or something, right? Let's say that you are going to go into uh, a serious conversation with your partner or with your family or whatever, you know, even a life or death kind of thing. It's really a call for you to gather whatever you need to gather so that you're not traumatized and again, trauma doesn't have to be drama. So if it should happen, just remember, you don't have to turn a mountain into a molehill. Okay. You can experience whatever you want to experience without losing it. Um, although if you need to lose it for a little while, okay. I, I, I very rarely lose it. Very, very, very rarely. But when I do, people that know me run for the hills. It's never a pretty sight. So all of that being said, if, if you've just been seeing camel a lot lately and you're like, what's up with that? Um, as a spirit animal, you might have asked for your spirit animal to come forth or the spirit animal might just be coming forth because the animal kingdom knows you need this animal's medicine and power um, and its archetypal meanings to help you. But Camel could mean any of its other meanings on any other day as your spirit animal. That's just what Camel wanted to be in the book and in the cards, right? Okay. If you have really, really identified, and I would tell you, I, I stand pretty strong about this one just in terms of all the people that Camel has come out for in readings and people that have asked me about Camel. So your totem animal is 
the animal that you are. And that's always going to start with your zodiac signs across all the zodiacal systems, right? Western, um, Chinese, Native American, um, Celtic, you know, all across that. That's your birth totem. But you can have another totem animal. As we all know, bear is mine. However, crazily enough, since I met Cowboy, the bison at, um, oh, uh, Oh my gosh, she's going to kill me. Jungle Jamie. Um, she's the head person out there. Mystic Jungle. Mystic Jungle Sanctuary in High Springs. Well, right above High Springs, Florida. I've, I've been seeing bison come into my life like at an alarming... And it took me a while to realize that was was happening because I'm always so focused on bear. So I would tell you that sometimes when you see an animal come over and over and over and over and over and over, that animal is actually trying to work with you so you adapt it or you adopt it as your totem, but you'll only know that by sitting and being in relationship with that animal, ask the animal to send you signs, ask the, you know, go into a meditation, um, ask friends of yours. Like I love to play this game with clients. I mean, it's not a game. It's really, and I'll, I'll ask them because some people don't know anything about spirit totem and power animals and some people don't care, but I ask everybody, would you like to know what your spirit animal is or what I see your totem animal is or what, what power? Animal? Well, yeah, that's kind of cool. And it's amazing. It is amazing how the animal spirit world will show up and, and tell you exactly, is it that person's spirit animal, totem animal or power animal and they'll be like, oh my gosh. Well, it's like somebody wrote in the chat earlier. I think I saw that somebody was, um, they're not really drawn to uh, the color gold or to gold. And they, um, they were called to use gold in their art this morning. And here we are talking about the gold of pentacles and all of that. It's that kind of synchronicity. Kowinky dink, some people call it. But we know, we know that it's synchronicity. Now, if, if, and I see this a lot when people uh, are all about camels and that's their totem. They are people that can survive pretty much anything. I haven't been shown another meaning of camel as a totem animal. That doesn't mean there's not one. It just means that I haven't been shown that. It doesn't mean that camel, if you are thinking that you are camel and camel is you and that's your totem animal, that you might ascribe to something else doing with camel and its meaning and its symbolism and you know, all of its myth and its fable and its legend. Cool. But in writing the book, in creating the deck, that's what I was told from Camel. And I have seen that over and over and over again in readings. Now, let's say that you want to, um, you're, you're like looking at all these things that Camel can do, right? They can sustain, they can, you know, unfortunately we know that they can carry great weights. We wouldn't know that unless we'd kidnapped them and you know how I feel about that. Um, which really is something to take a look at because, you know, this has to do with bulls, cows, horses, donkeys, any beast that we use as a beast of burden. And I do mean use because humans use them. Um, it, it may be that it's time for you to take a look at who's using you, who's dumping on your shoulders, who's asked you, or has just assumed that you'll carry a heavy load, you don't have to do that. You know, um, I, I don't, you don't have to do that. You don't. Uh, elephants, you don't have to do that. You have it within you. Um, unfortunately, very nefarious means are used to make big animals do people's bidding. I won't go into it. It's horrible. I know you know it. There's no reason to talk about it. But it, as horrible as it is, it does equate to uh, human life as well, because people will do all kinds of horrible things to beat you out at something, to make you subservient, to get you to follow their program. I, I, I mean, you know, from physical abuse to mental abuse to emotional abuse, it's all in an effort to control or punish because that other person can't stand to see somebody else be in a better place. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons people do the things they do. None of, you know, most of them not great, but, um, but you don't have to take that. So if you are wanting to like be the, Maureen and I have a joke going on right now about the Kool-Aid man and, um, you know, busting through the wall. And so, um, if you want to be like the Kool-Aid man, then bust through because camel will allow you to do that. 
And if you're afraid of stepping out, um, you know, I talk to a lot of people that are really afraid to leave relationships. They're not sure they can make it on their own financially. They're not sure that, you know, they've got enough confidence to do this, to do that. I mean, we all have fears of all kinds, right? Deep, deep, deep seated fears for a lot of, a lot of reasons. But when you want to work with an animal spirit guide as your power animal, you've got to find those places of yourself that, well, it's not even places. It's like connect with you as the camel and then step outside of the camel as you. I'll give you case in point. So when Catherine said to me, well, I know you, Bernadette. You don't invoke the bear. You are the bear. You invoke Bernadette. That made so much sense to me. I thought, I'm going to try this with some other animals. So in about 25 seconds of spare time I have every day, which I do to myself. I'm my own beast of burden. I'm not complaining. I'm not whining. I love it. I, if I if I could stay up for days and days and days at a time, I would. I just love, love, love what I do. I love it. So I decided... <laughs> I decided I wanted to see what it was like to be a penguin. I don't know why. I think probably because I was listening to, to the track from Happy Feet a few days earlier and I'd been singing... Na -na -na! You know, I love when when Robin Williams, way gone, way too soon, would sing as that penguin. It just cracked me up. So that's probably why I chose. But I I sat, um, you know, because for readings, you've got to go into theta like that. And I can go into theta like that. So I went there, and all of a sudden, I started shivering. I was cold. I mean, I was cold. And it was not psychosomatic. I literally was the penguin. I could feel the ice underneath my feet and let it be said, let it be said that I've only ever been around snow once and it was in New York and it wasn't even real snow. It was like this gray sludge on the side of the road. It was gross. Um, but that's all I've ever been in snow. I don't know. I mean, I can imagine what snow feels like under my feet, but under my little penguin feet, I could feel that snow. And in a, in a flash, I thought, gosh, my feet feel rough. I need to get a pedicure. And then that's what brought me up and out of that uh, meditation was I was like, I don't need a pedicure. I was feeling my rubbery little penguino feet, my little flippers. And that I'm telling you now, that's how deeply you can remember who you are as whatever animal that you've been will be. I mean, we're all, listen, you know, I can tell you my beliefs about where we're from and how it's come to pass that we're all connected, blah, 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 whatever. Okay. So all of that said, Oh, Carlo, I know I don't, I can never remember Maggie. I can't remember how to pronounce his last name ever. It's Nakai or Nike. I, I'm, if you guys don't know this fella, he can play the flute, the native American flute. Like I, I've only ever heard one person that even kind of sort of comes close and it's a Facebook buddy of mine. His name is Johnny Hernandez. So if you guys, if you're on, if you're a friend of mine on Facebook, um, I would go through my friends list and I would find Johnny Hernandez and I would just click on him, his profile when he plays flute music. It is, it's otherworldly. He's amazing. Amazing. So all that said, okay. So, um, I will, um, I will say that, again, when you're working with camel and its symbolism and its meanings and you want to know what it means as a spirit totem or power animal, I hope that has covered it um, pretty, you know, extensively and that you, you will consider um, camel energy. And the reason I say that is it's really not one of the first animals that come up when people start to work with their totems. Uh, you know, everybody wants the sexy spirit animals, the snakes and the ravens and the owls and the tigers and the bears and the lions. Oh my, uh, horses. Oh my gosh. Everybody in the world is convinced that not everybody, but so many people are convinced that horses, their totem or whatever. And it very well may be, but, and for, for a lot of different reasons, but, um, I, I would encourage you well, and this is what the page of pentacles is encouraging you to do is open your mind to other things that it can be. 
And um, I just want to hold this up today, by the way, this bracelet. You know who you are. I thank you very much. This little jingly jangly thing that's got these crazy, beautiful, you know who you are, and I thank you very much. So, um, so that being said, uh, thus, thus ends the sermon for the day about camels. And they really are sweet creatures. Unfortunately, I had the opportunity to meet one. Um, because I say unfortunately, because of course Bernadette would not have met a camel had it not been in captivity. Very well taken care of, I must say. Um, oh, well, let me just say one thing. In a lot of ways, it wasn't very well taken care of because it was the only camel. And camels are definitely herd animals. And when you start separating herd animals from their herd, that never goes well. Case in point. This is my favorite thing when people tell me they're loners. Really? Why is that? And they've got all kinds of reasons of this and that. And I'm like, I've never heard anyone say, including myself, that they're a loner unless there was some kind of scarring or disdain or distrust or whatever of the human race at large. So really, are you better off as a loner or are you better off part of a herd as long as it's your herd? As long as it's your herd. I just had this conversation with somebody last night, my BFF Ray. We just had this conversation because he always calls himself a lone wolf. He's been deaf since birth. And he's like, look, you don't understand. Being deaf puts you in a different category. It puts you, people treat you differently, especially back then, you know, because he's close to my age and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, really try being fat. Try being fat in the South with cystic acne from a poor family who can't afford clothes. They didn't even make clothes that fit fat kids, fat girls. I mean, they had all kind of husky boys clothes, which is why you always saw me in flannel and jeans and boots. About the only clothes I could get to put, you know, Put on my rotunda heifer self. Okay, so let's, you know, it's not a contest. Where I'm going with this having to do with you and Camel is oftentimes when I see an animal card inverted, I take a look at, is it a mammal? And, and of course, Camel is. Okay, if it's an inverted what family sustenance are you not getting? What family nutrition are you not getting? If um, camel comes inverted, I might say, have a little bit of a kerfuffle with people around you, friends, family, coworkers, that kind of thing. How'd you know? Because <laughs> that's what you're paying me to know. Um, and so just remember that as comfortable as you might feel alone, as much as you might think that's what you were born to do or born to be, I will caution you that you you when camel comes up, I'm not telling you what to do with your life. I'm just saying when camel or cows or horses or even a well, not dinosaurs, to the best of my knowledge, I don't I don't know that they went in herds. I think Brontosaurus went in herds. Uh, a T Rex, they're the true loners of the world. They're the true loners of the world. But um, you, you get where I'm going with this. If if camel comes into your awareness, you might be being asked to take a good look. At, a, at how much alone time you spend or how your tribe is treating you. So there we go. Thus ends the sermon on camel for today. Um, I do want to touch briefly on the sacral chakra and then uh, I'll go ahead and get questions uh, at the... Uh, bye, Lily. Looks like you're leaving. Bye. So um, it's... Uh, it, sorry, I was just called to look at the chat. Your hand is itching. I love that. I love that your name is Simba. Simba, I am your father. I love that. Um, but my moderators will tell you how today is working, how the readings are working today. But I love that name, Simba, whoever you are. Um, so when we take a look at the sacral chakra, we know that we are looking at the orange chakra. It's the second chakra. And it's it, it goes really very much along with the, um, you know, with the who am I? Like, what am I all about? What am I made of? That kind of thing. And in Sanskrit, it's this, oh, Lordy, me in Sanskrit. Country girl tries to pronounce Sanskrit, y'all. It's Syad, Syad Sithnatha. I, I can't, we're done here. Um, it, to me, it sounds like Harry Potter speaking Slytherin. That's, that's what it sounds like to me. But the motto is, I feel the color is orange. The element is water. And so really any, any, any red or uh, orange crystal 
helps tremendously. It's where your emotions, your self-worth, your sexuality, that's where all of those things reside is in the sacral chakra. And so when, when we're looking at, uh, you know, a pairing, <laughs> you know, a fine dessert to go with the fine wine, I would encourage you all that when you work with the tarot, when you work with your animal spirit guides, that you become aware of what chakra in your system or a chakra in somebody else's body is activated, damaged, um, shattered, mu murky, mucky, what, you know, whatever, or conversely, which one is really well balanced, doing very well, or, or is over activated, right? I know, I'll give you for instance, myself and my, my immediate set of like, like people I've known for years that are family to me and family, we love what we do so much that we would do it, like I said, we'd, we'd never sleep, ever. And so because of that, people have labeled us workaholics and we've labeled ourselves workaholics when really we're not that kind of a holic. We are joyaholics. And I got, I've got no problems with that. I got no qualms going, yep, I'm a joyaholic. Okay. I'll take a devil's helping of that, please. But it is an unbalanced sacral chakra and solar plexus chakra. It's just unbalanced. It, they just, they, they, they burn hot, 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 hot. And then I flame out. Ugh, I gotta, you know, I gotta sleep for 18 hours, right? I know you know people like that. You might be that yourself. So when you take a look at, you know, sacral chakra healing or a meditation or the meanings, that kind of thing. The motto again is I feel. The mantra is VAM, V-A-M. And you, you can't step into the full energy of really anything unless your sacral chakra is clear, vibrant, spinning, because you'll never save your life to the fullest. So no matter what card or animal you pull, if the sacral chakra comes up in one of those three ways, it's very well balanced. Um, it's out of balance because it's too much or it's too little or it's this or it's that. It's, it, it's, if you think of it like your belly button jewel, okay. For those of you that don't want to get a piercing, but you've always wanted a belly button crystal or piece of jewelry or something, that's your sacral chakra. So when, when we talk about, and I, and I, I, re I really hope there are no underage people on this, uh, on this chat. If you are, please leave. If you're looking at this video and you're underage, please leave. Cause I don't want your parents calling me. Um, but there's a lot of sexuality wrapped up in the sacral chakra and that is sacred sexuality of all kinds. And that means with whomever you want or don't want as a partner, it also means with yourself. Um, because what was the book? What was the book way back in the early days? It was like, you're responsible for your own orgasm or something like that. You're, I don't know. It was, it was hilarious to me then because I was a kid and, you know, still, still had a lot of embarrassment and shame and that kind of thing around sex. And, you know, cause that, what are you taught? You know, especially in my generation, good girls don't blah, blah, whatever. Okay. So, um, that is also Kundalini energy. Where is the Kundalini at that, in that chakra? How are you? you know, how, how's that working for you or not? And it, it is, that's kind of where a lot of creativity begins is in, um, you know, in the solar plexus. And then as it becomes, as it goes up to the, um, or excuse me, it's the sacral chakra is what we're talking about, the sacral chakra. And then as the energy goes up into the solar plexus chakra, then it's, it's just this really amazing blend of the first two chakras and that's like the world outside of you, but the sacral chakra is about the world inside of you and your emotions. So, um, you know, remember that your third eye is here. Okay. And your crown chakra, which is, you know, um, psychic and intuition or whatever, but you can get messages from anywhere in your body medical intuitives will tell you that. And I, I don't, I don't advertise medical being a medical intuitive. I don't do medical intuition readings. I am not interested in doing that. Um, that's just a place I don't, mm -mm. but if something comes up in someone's reading and I know that they need to know about it, or that needs to be a piece of evidence because 
it does for whatever reason, then I will bring it up. I will not offer a solution for it unless they ask and spirit tells me yes. But I'm, I also say, I don't really do that, but I will ask spirit and if spirit's like, no, nope, stick to your guns, no medical intuition, I will tell them. But if spirit's like, well, you know, really, if they could just go to blah, 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 or they would just do blah, 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 that's a different story. Okay, that said, um, be, be very aware that you can, um, it, it, be very aware that, that you might be getting messages for yourself and for others in any number of your chakras. Now, if you want to talk about sacral chakra, you know, healing and cleansing, oh, don't let me get started on the diet, right? Don't, because it's your gallbladder, it's your appendix, it's your kidneys, it's your intestines, your lower, your liver, the pancreas, the spleen, and all of that. And then of course your reproductive uh, organs. And so if you just got gunk going on in there, uh, I see this a lot with women who get PMS or have a really tough time with their, uh, you know, their auntie flow. I see that oftentimes they've got a sacral chakra thing going on. And one of the ways that you can know if somebody's got a sacral chakra issue is if they, they're emotionally unstable, almost manic. And that can definitely be that. Or if you feel like your creativity is blocked. And so I always say when people are like, well, what can I do about it? I'm like, well, you can do a million things about it. But for me, what I've always experienced or seen in others is that self-forgiveness and forgiveness for others, that's sacral chakra all day long. And so when you look at, you know, again, it's some people call it the orange chakra, chakra some people call it the second chakra, some people call it the Siddhnasa Hatha Wada Wada Wada. I, y'all, forgive me. I'm not making fun. I just, for as many years as I've been doing this, I don't know why I can't wrap my little pumpkin head around how to pronounce those Sanskrit words. I've listened to them a thousand times. For whatever reason, it just doesn't cement in my head. Anyway, um, but in that forgiveness, it, 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 it also has to be born of being true to yourself because when you are not true to yourself, how are you going to forgive yourself and vice versa? Um, also you may be compelled to eat a lot of orange foods. Uh, it was really funny. I, I don't, I don't really crave potatoes ever. I never really have. But last week I was like, if I don't have a sweet potato or a yam, I'm a die. And then I had a conversation. I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine and I had, um, I had a sweet potato baking in the oven and um, she said, man, I, I'm feeling like a block in your sacral chakra. And I was like, well, funny you mentioned that. I said, I didn't think of it that way. I just thought I was having a craving because I get them regularly, but I've got a sweet potato in the oven. She was like, aha, aha. And I did sure enough. I felt better after having that sweet tater with a little bit of cinnamon and a lot of butter and a little bit of sugar, right? Because that's why you eat sweet potatoes in the South. Um, and so, uh, and here's the controversy. I want to know in the chat, this is hilarious. I want to know in the chat, do you all, um, uh, okay. Do you, uh, are you, are you potato jacket eaters? Do you eat the skin or do you not? I'd love to know who, I don't know why. Um, I don't know why I want to know that. If you eat the, oh, Cherry, you've been eating oranges like crazy. Well, there you go. Okay. There you have it. Okay. Yes, brown sugar, Kelly, there's no other kind. Or um, on a sweet potato or a yam, there's no other kind than brown sugar. That's number one, but number two, even when I do eat sugar, it's the um, the turbinado raw sugar. I've never really liked the taste of white sugar. But anyway, let me get back to the chakra, and then I'm going to take questions. So a mantra that you, you know, some mantras that, you know, I always advise people to write their own mantras for things or affirmations or spell work or whatever. But, you know, you could try, I embrace and enjoy life in full measure. I'm a wellspring of joyous creativity. I trust my intuition to bring me correct and useful information. And if you center the power, you center the energy in your sacral chakra and you have that wish, prayer, mantra, affirmation, spell, literally you can feel it rising up out of that, coming up and out of you, you know, and you speak it aloud or you write it. That could be super helpful. Um, you can do visualization exercises to heal your sacral chakra, to balance it, to clear it. Um, you know, anything orange that you will makes you feel good. Like if it's oranges, okay. Maybe it was a bright orange beach ball you had when you were a kid. Um, maybe 
maybe it's a, an orange t-shirt that you bought from your favorite music concert. I don't know. It could be anything. Now, not everybody can wear the color orange, but if you could, uh, a scarf, a shirt, shorts, earrings, what, whatever, start toting that around with you and you could uh, do very well. Now, let me just say one more thing about uh, the sacral chakra and its meaning and symbolism. Of course, you can do yoga and there's a butterfly pose. Um, that can really, really help you activate. Like, let's say your creativity is, is a little down or a little dry, or you're just not feeling it, you know, like with your partner, you just haven't really been feeling sexy or that you want to have an intimate, physical intimacy, that kind of thing. Because let's be clear, it's not just about sex. It can be. It's not just about sacred sex. It is about intimacy at the end of the day. Not everybody, not for everybody. Some people, you know, that whole big friends with benefits movement that's gone all around, that never works well ever for the women it can work okay for the guys sometimes but remember i work in a college town i've literally read tens of thousands of college students it never works well for the girls ever okay so all that being said friends with benefits i mean um if you need to activate in that area anything vibrational anything yoga that will open your hips oh like stretch that whole area um uh, but definitely sound healing, any kind of vibration that you, uh, that kind of means intimacy or sexuality to you, get that vibration going. Uh, and that can be even animal sounds. When I, when I want to be like super creative and I want to be able to see lots of moving parts come in to make one big cohesive, perfect picture I visualize honeybees because when you take a look at honeycombs, those little bees, man, they, they're all of those little chambers in there are the, are perfectly, they're perfect. Mathematically, measurement wise, they're perfect. You know, the golden honey, the sun energy, all of that. And taking a look at all of the pieces, parts to bring it together. That's exactly what bees do in a hive. So I always in, in, and I can hear them. It's easier for me because I grew up, you know, my sister, um, the family that she married into had a honey bee, had a honey business, and so I know what it sounds like to stand in the middle of a bunch of hives, apiaries, and um, and listen to that thrum and listen to that thrum. There's nothing like it. It's crazy. But you may listen to whale songs uh, on YouTube. You may maybe you live somewhere where you can get out in a boat. Um, you may listen to the chatter of monkeys or dolphins. You may um, sometimes at night if I'm just like. I don't know, like maybe I can't relax or focus or whatever. I'll get one of my cats. Well, I don't really have to do that. They all climb in bed with me and I'll pull one of them up to my ear and put another one on the other side. And it's really interesting how they get to purring in unison. And then I'm like, okay, I'm good. And then we all fall asleep and I wake up with cat hair in my mouth. Um, cause, <laughs> cause that's my life as a single person at 54. <laughs> anyway. Um, so the one thing I do want to say is you'll know when your sacral chakra is what it should be because all of a sudden you're like, people can't stop noticing you. They can't stop commenting on how good you look, how happy you look, how healthy you look. It's like you're incandescent. It's, it's like, it's like you just light up yourself from the inside out. And that's one of the ways you'll know. And I, I would, I would also say that for the solar plexus chakra for sure. But when it's the sacral chakra, that there you go. Okay, so we've covered um, the chakra for today. We've covered the animal for today. We've covered the tarot card for today. Now, hit me with your best shot. Uh, how about you ask questions, and I'll answer questions as I see them. Maybe, possibly. Maybe, going one. I'm struggling to pinpoint my spiritual totem animal. I've meditated, but I'm not getting a clear answer. Since opening, I'm getting so many animals stepping forward. Are they all my spirit animals? Okay, so Gwen S., you just asked three questions in one. So what that means is, are you looking to find your totem animal, which is who you are, which will always begin with your zodiac sign, whatever animal, whatever zodiac sign you are, with Pisces, um, or excuse me, with Libra being... Uh, a balance, animals that represent balance, usually black and white animals, penguins, pandas, zebras, that kind of thing. Um, whereas your spirit animal is the animal that you, 
that shows up to give you love and support and healing and all that kind of thing. And you can have multiples of each, right? So when it, the first thing, the first thing that I would do is to, when I step into your energy, Okay, so I assume if you're asking me a question, I mean, I'm never going to go over, like, I'm never going to cross a line, but I'm, 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 I'm thinking that I can be as forthright as the spirit animals tell me. Um, I feel like, Gwen, that you, this is not the only struggle that you've had in life. It's like almost everything that you've had to get, like almost everything you have, you've had to work hard for. Things were not just handed to you. And when I look at your energy, I don't see anything underneath it. So I don't, maybe you had, um, I mean, you certainly had a family, but maybe your family wasn't so supportive of you as a younger person. They may not be supportive of you now. I just, and I also feel like you're not a whole lot like your family. Let me just say this. Sorry, you guys, I've got to put a mint in. My throat is on, I, I'm not a camel this morning. I'm super dry. Um, when I just want to say that I feel like you're a black sheep of the family, but not in a negative way at all. It It's just that you're different. And because of that, it when I say black sheep, I would suspect that many of us are black sheep in our families because we're the creatives. We think differently. We see things differently. We communicate differently. Um, and so if I'm going to take a look at your totem animal, I, I would say it's a black sheep because I think that's who you are in all of the best ways, just because people give a negative connotation to being a black sheep and what its traditional meanings are has nothing to do with the real animal in real life. They're beautiful and they're different than white sheep, but they're not so different that you know, they're an anomaly. Um, your spirit animal, uh, I'm just going to stay with one for the totem animal for right now. Your spirit animal is a whole different story, a whole different story, and probably better left unrevealed about what it is and why it is it. Probably better left unrevealed um, here today. So, um, That's the understatement of the year, Teapot. You're a very private person. You are. If you ever want a secret keeper, she's the one. Okay, so Jocelyn, Reyes, I'm, I'm going to do one, one animal for each. So I'm going to go with your spirit animal for the moment. And for some reason, I keep seeing lots of fluffy little dogs. Fluffy little dogs. But stay with me on this, Jocelyn. I also see an Ewok. So I don't know if you're like a Star Wars fan or if it's teddy bears and I'm seeing it as an Ewok, but I swear I'm seeing an Ewok in little fluffy dogs. So here's what the little fluffy dogs are trying to get across to you, Jocelyn. I feel like you feel small, whether in stature like your physical, like you might be, you know, what we consider short, or you might be in a situation where you're feeling like you're the low man or the small man on the totem pole or whatever. Something about you feels like it's feeling small and there's nothing small about you. And little dogs might be small. I mean, the story, she, somehow she moved her blanket off of her bed. I don't know how she did that and why she would have done it. But anyway, um, my dog Hops is a terrier chihuahua mix. She weighs, what, 13 pounds or something? But she comes barreling after you. Grown men have gone, ugh, and stepped back. So there's something about you, and um, there's something about you in really taking a look at Ewoks. Again, it could be stuffed bears, but I really think it's an Ewok. First time I've ever seen for anybody. Um, and I'd like to know, Jocelyn, if that means anything to you, because it is kind of a kooky thing to see for someone. Um, but again, you might be a Star Wars fan and you might be, um, you might be, um, 
you might just be picking up something in um, the Star Wars series. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, hold on. Little C, big C. Do you move in 2021? No. I was actually told to say no before the question was even out of my mouth. That's just a big fat no. It will not go well. And you're not even really like excited about where you are thinking about moving right now. It's almost like you would be settling. Don't do it. I don't. I don't like it. I mean, do what you want. And listen, let me be clear. I wish I was 100% accurate 100% of the time. There isn't a psychic, intuitive, there's nobody alive that is 100%, 100% of the time. However, emotionally, like literally in my gut, I feel so strongly about you not moving in 2021. And what I mean, I'm like, okay, well, when's a better time? You may not like this, but 2023, man, I'm like, all I can see is a coastline. It looks like a 50s movie, like this beautiful old, uh, late, mo you know, late model, but older, maybe like a T-Bird or a Mustang, probably a T-Bird that, that is a convertible and you're driving along and it's like those 50 movies where they're dri they're driving along. They're sitting in a stationary car with a, a fan blowing on them. Your hair is blowing and the coastline is to one, one side of you. I, it has that kind of feeling about it. It's really awesome. So you may not end up moving until 2023, but it'll be one of the best things you ever do. Hope that helped. Um, Okay. Um, Joan Jurish, knowing your totem animals. So let me just say this. Let me just say this for you guys that are asking about totem animals. I can tell you what I'm getting, but you're much better off knowing your totem animal on your own because it will always be the animal that you've always been the most drawn to or are obsessively drawn to at this moment in your life. I have always been obsessed with bears. Other, Maureen's always been obsessed with wolves. Teapot, I don't remember yours. Amy, my um, my right hand, I'm a left hand. I'm in my brain a lot of the times. Um, Amy is, she's always loved cows. Always. So your totem animal will always be your birth totem, and that's the zodiac sign you are at birth, and that's in all the zodiacal systems. Um, and then it will be whatever animal you think you're most like or that speaks most to you. And has usually been with you for some time. So I'm going to bypass the questions about the totem animals. Um, okay, let me just say this because it already popped in my head. Joan, Joan Jurish. I keep seeing I keep seeing very tall, very elegant birds: storks, cranes, herons, flamingos. Anything that's got a long neck, but not like an ostrich, not like a um, a cassowary. They're long and they're elegant. They're long and they're elegant, but not a swan. They're, they're again, flamingos, herons, storks, long and tall, long and tall, and elegant and elegant. For some reason, that's who's come in um, as your totem animal. So I hope that resonates with you. Um, yeah, Melinda, I... Melinda, just so you know, I'm, I'm seeing two things for you. I keep, I'm just going to say what I'm seeing for you. This, it, it may be what you resonate with as your totem animal. Chances are probably pretty good. This is your spirit animal. Not true. Chances are very good. These are probably even more your power animal than your totem animal. I feel like you've got a fascination or at least interest in Asia. So like Japan and China, and I don't remember what they're called, but they're, they are those guard dogs that kind of look like bulldogs, but kind of look like dragons. It starts with an S and I don't remember the name. I keep seeing that for you as an animal. That's the first time ever. Wow. So it's maybe almost like it's maybe almost like you really identify with dragons and you also identify with dogs, thick, hardy dogs, like a bulldog, a pit, um, just hardy dogs, right? I, I, yeah, I, 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 I'd be very interested to know what, what you're receiving with that, Melinda. Okay. 
Um, I don't think so, Kelly. Kelly Kelly Keeley asked to go out with an old flame. I don't think anything awful will come of it. I just think it'll be a waste of your time. It'll just be a waste of your time. I just feel like you'll be so bored. You'll be like, oh, Lord. I don't know. Kelly B, in that case, would Hawk be a version of the Phoenix for this Scorpio? I don't know what you're talking about in whatever case. I will tell you that um, you could take it that way. My experience with the, with the Spirit Totem and Power Animals is that they are very specific. And so... You could take it that way, but when I lean into it, I don't feel Phoenix energy. I don't even really feel Hawk energy so much as I see Eagle energy. Kelly B, do you have a thing for Eagles? Because I, 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 I just don't see Hawk. I know you're bringing it up for some reason. You must have had an experience or whatever. Um, there's got to be a reason, but I keep seeing Eagle energy somehow working in correlation with Phoenix when you're ready for Phoenix. And that's what I keep hearing is she's not ready for Phoenix. She's not ready to be the Phoenix, meaning you're not ready to step out of being the Phoenix to be Kelly, if that makes sense. You're right now, you're most comfortable as Kelly. Sometime in the future, not, not too long into the future, I feel like you'll be more comfortable as the Phoenix. And I don't, again, but you know what, Kelly, I just want to say this also. I think Eagle very much has to do with somebody on the other side that is coming through for you that that either loved eagles lived in a place where there were a lot of eagles or had some kind of military or peacekeeping law keeping job um because oftentimes i'll see eagle if it's military police a judge um Coast Guard, I mean, it could be anything that, that is part of an organization that they they keep the peace. Let me just say that. Oh, Marsha. <laughs> Here's what I read, Marsha Taylor. You know that you have beer. That's what I read. <laughs> That's what I read. I do have beer. There's this great beer, y'all, um, and it tastes just like pineapple upside down cake. I don't remember what it's called. Um, and then somebody brought me a beer that's called Unicorn Farts because <laughs> they know I love unicorns. I haven't had that one yet. Okay. You know that you have a bear. How do you know what mine is? Okay. This is a question I get asked a lot. So I'm just going to, Ooh, I'm going to answer that question. I got to go y'all. Um, there are so many ways that you can know. The first thing is you've got to be willing to be aware. What songs are you hearing often? What animal are you always interested in? Um, what pictures of what animals do you always love? What songs come up for you that have a, a correlation to your animal? All that kind of thing. So I just was in love with bears from the time I was a kid. And I had, you know, I grew up in the South and I grew up, you know, going to friends' farms and around racehorsing and all that kind of thing. You know, cattle ranching and you know, pigs and, I mean, pick a farm animal, right? And it was always bears for me, always. I didn't even know anything about the world of metaphysics when I was obsessed with bears. And to come to find out, my name Bernadette is the feminine counterpart to Bernard and actually means strong or brave, strong bear. So it was, a, it was who I incarnated in as, and you could always do that. You, you could always take a, a past life trip to just the life in between lives. And if you believe in sacred contracts, you could see if when you pen your sacred contract that you pen to be, um, you know, associated with whatever animal, this particular animal. I've, uh, people do that. They And, you know, you could always ask friends, uh, you know, what animal do you see me as? And just see what they say. Most people will kind of, You'll be surprised what how many people can come up with something. They may not have thought about it before, but like the second you ask that question, they're like that. And then you just have to see what feels right as you. And that's for everybody that's having a difficult time trying to figure out who their totem is separate from or in addition to your birth totem, which is your zodiac sign. So I hope all of this was helpful. 
Um, I love you all very much. Thank you for coming today. Thank you again to my moderators, Maureen and Teapot. Um, Amy, I don't know if you're still here, but the paintbrush is waiting. And um, it is, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the little ringy dingy bell thingy. Please, please, please share my videos on your social media channels. Uh, get on over to wildpackwisdom.com forward slash forums. It's where I answer all questions and I hang out. And um, all of that said, what's the most important thing? To do good for animals, including yourself, and stay.